Langflow is a great way to build AI applications, including agents, MCP servers, and more, while rapidly iterating using the Visual IDE. In our discussion today, we're going to look at how you can host this so you can expose it over an API and use it in any user interface. And to start with, let's just take a look at Langflow running locally. This is Langflow running locally via this command, docker run port 7860, 7860 Langflow. If you run this command right now, you'll get Langflow running locally like this. This is just local Langflow. And we start a new flow, maybe a basic prompting flow, and that's it. I'm ready. All I need to do is paste an API key and I can chat with this. I can go to the playground and say hello to a chatbot. But if I want to publish this and maybe expose API access, this is only local. So I can't expose this over the internet. Look, it's it's on 0000, which is um, a local host address. This is a loopback address, but it's very similar to local host. This is not going to be accessible over the internet. In this video, we're going to look at how we can expose this over the internet so you can use it anywhere you want. To start with, well, let's take a look at a GitHub repo that makes deploying Langflow or hosting Langflow very easy. So this is the repo you're going to want to pay attention to. Uh, Datastacks slash host Langflow on GitHub. It's open source and public. And um, it has instructions, but we'll just walk through it here. What you're going to do is fork this immediately. As soon as you fork it, you'll have your own fork that you can bring to deployment platforms like Flight Control, Render, and more. Let's go to render.com and uh, your fastest path to production, indeed. So let's go to the dashboard and we have nothing. So let's deploy a new web service. Uh, so we'll do new web service um, in my fork once again, <coughs> 11 minutes ago, interesting. Um, the name can be the same, uh, it's, it is Docker branch. This is all good. The root directory is the repository root, so I'm going to leave that blank. And again, for Langflow, you need a minimum of about two gigs of RAM, so we could choose standard, um, one CPU, two gigs of RAM. I'm going to go a bit more power here because I do want it fast. And again, AI workloads, they may require more power, so um, we'll do that. And that's it, and we're going to deploy this web service as well. Um, and it's going to start deploying. All right, so this is now deploying on render. Um, again, it's not going to take it's not going to take twelve minutes, but it will take some time. So it looks like it's still deploying. It's still um, in progress here, and so we'll wait for that. Look at this; it's live, and we can click on this host dash langflow on render dot com, and boom, we've got langflow. Let's create a flow. Um, this is great. Let's go check the API access and check this out host langflow.onrender.com. This is how you can make Langflow accessible over the internet and build great things. If you're wondering about what you can build with Langflow, well, this YouTube channel has a lot of suggestions about that. We also have a blog and social media. Follow us on X and Discord. There's links under the like button for ideas about what you can build and now what you could expose over the internet as MCP servers, AI agents, or more. We can't wait to see what you build and we look forward to being part of the conversation. See you next time.